Thank you. Okay. Young David. Yes. Um, young David, together with Jenny Hughes, who, as you know, is a former chair of the regional council. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'll begin with congratulations. You are operating a progressive rating system. You are providing a high standard of services for water, wastewater, traffic lights, parks, etc. And you face the reality over cost increases and bitten the bullet with a necessary 13% rates increase. Rates are still great value for money. So overall performance, A+. Plus. But a B- minus for transparency on the cost of borrowing. In one place, we are told <clears throat> that $1.2 billion in loans will be repaid over 10 years. In another place, if you look hard enough, you can find that uh, net interest um, of uh, costs 12.5% of rates. But nowhere, anywhere, does it say that every rates dollar, or of every rates dollar, 24 cents is needed for loan servicing. Now, that's basic information which every rate payer should know, but it's not there. <clears throat> People understand the mortgage. How much is the council mortgage? 24 cents in every dollar. <clears throat> and a B minus on prudence. You have a policy to get back to fully funding renewals from rates, and that's prudent. But this year, you're proposing to go backwards. You've had this policy since 2015, but it's taking an awful long time to get there. Now, this is an unnecessary step backwards because the LTP contains a lot of capital projects that are desirable or necessary, but you cannot argue that they are urgent. Those projects can be deferred for a few years while you get on and fund those renewals from rates. Um, you're a group of young councillors, pretty young, and I hope that most of you will still be here in 10 years. If you tackle the borrowing problem now, you will find that in 10 years, this council has got the flexibility to do so much more, including for climate change. Um, which have I got into the next one? Yeah, I think I have. <clears throat> Um, and when it comes to the inclusive, inclusive city, I'm giving you a D minus, because sadly, we have a city where people are sleeping on the streets and in cars. Now, the council, as you know, is spending a lot of ratepayer money on a covered stadium so that people can be sheltered from the weather when they watch a rugby match. You need to ask yourselves why you are not prepared to spend ratepayer money to shelter homeless people from the weather. Uh, that's all I've got to say. Over to Jenny. Oh, well, good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for continuing these hearings. It's really important for democracy that you councillors listen in this way. So I'm really impressed that you've got so many submissions this year and it's only getting better because we need to make sure that the public are continually involved in democracy and engaging as much as possible. So I love what you're doing in that space. I want to congratulate you about climate change. You have passed a, a motion deciding that the council believes it's urgent. And as far back as 2004, the council actually passed a very, very progressive sustainability policy. At the time, more resident citizens were engaged in the development of that policy than any other at earlier. It was very, very successful. So behind the scenes, lots of good stuff has been going on all of that time. But now it's time, it's, it's past urgent. You really have to be taking action across the whole organisation. You need to harness all the intelligence of all the staff and collectively what you've got around this table to make act take actions that the council can do to reduce carbon emissions. You'll, make, you'll find fantastic ideas if you do it that way. 
So for that reason, we are suggesting that you need to urgently set up a special committee, and it has to be across with the regional council. You must involve them. You must work together. This is about the whole of our region. We need to get planning. You need six or eight of you to be on that committee. You need to go and to a course at the university called Transitioning, Transition in Engineering. That will change the way you think about what's going on with the planet. You need to invest in this for yourselves, for the knowledge that you've got, and you need to do it urgently. And you need to review the principles for carbon emissions that you're operating on. You need to work proactively with staff about what they can do. You need to look at issues like waste minimisation. How about bringing back home composting again? Doing it through the libraries. We used to have worm farms there. We haven't got them anymore. It's more urgent to have worm farms now than ever. Stuff that doesn't cost you that much money. Every staff member could be following these principles in their day-to-day -day work. You must do it. And now today on the news, when I was driving in, the government is actually setting up in the Treasury a committee to look into the principles across New Zealand for climate change, weather, weather storms. You've got those as well, but you've got what should be ongoing action around climate change. How, how's, how's progress going there, Jenny? Progress how's, is not... No, is no, how's not, progress going on your submission? Oh, we're nearly finished. Oh, good. One more minute. <laughs> I think that you just have to do it and do it now. And um, we are open for questions. No, I'm sorry we have no no time left. You've used it all oh, up. sorry. Thank you. No, no, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no. I think five minutes is too little, by the way. Okay. Yeah, good. Yes. We've got a lot. Thank you very much for going to the trouble of coming in. Thank you very much. Is um, Brett Bradley. How are you, mate?